Hello and welcome PML fans, I am your host Admin Joe here and I am here interviewing the coach of the Oakland Aarons, Timothy. Hey, what's going on everybody? Hey Tim, how are you doing today? I am doing absolutely fantastic, you know, I am ready for this, it's been a... Ooh, it's been a while since I've had a draft league up on a YouTube channel, so. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off with the first question, and it is going to be, what made you want to join this draft league? Honestly, I like draft leagues. Um, given that there was a chance, you know, for an opening to bring the Aarons back, I had to take it. had to take it in an instant. I was not going to pass up this opportunity. Yeah, and I see. Yeah. And I'm – I. I'm greatly honored that you let me redo your logo a little bit. Oh, dude, honestly, uh, I am. I honestly think you did a brilliant redo of it. It looks so much better. I mean, the last one was just, you know, a quick art draw. So, honestly, I thank you more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, our second question for you is, uh, obviously, it, it's normally supposed to be, is this your first draft league? Clearly, it's not. And... Um, let's see. I can't read my handwriting here. What drew you to PML's draft style? Um, honestly, it's unique. It's way different, and it makes everything a lot more fair and less ridiculous. So, uh, it's something I definitely appreciate. All right, so, how 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 different? Um, well, every other draft league I've been in, you know, allows the same items. You know, allows you know multiple Pokemon to go to sleep. So. You know, the fact that you have, like, these more strict set of rules make it much more balanced, make it much more, you know, don't, like, don't be a, don't be a dickhead. Uh, excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good with it. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to take as much RNG out of the game as possible. And that's and... something that I respect. That is something I very, very much appreciate. And, yeah, so, uh, every, it's been working so far, so. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to what do you hope to accomplish with your team strategically? <laughs> Not go 0-7 or 0-8 or however many I got to go against. That's all I wish. <laughs> all I wish is to have a good time and at least get at least one win. That's all I care about. And uh, the strategy for your team, it, it's pretty obvious with the Drake of Vision, the Polytoad, but what, yeah, else you um, have, what else do you feel you have working for you outside of that? I uh, you know what? One of my sleeper Pokemon, sleeper picks, every single draft league I take, I got to bring my girl Maleficent with me, Malamar. Mm -hmm. Very slept on, and uh, she gets her way. She sweeps, so a little bit of a warning there for everybody. <laughs> uh, I tend to pick a lot of Pokemon that you know people don't really pay attention to, only for them to, uh, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh... I have seen in this league everyone's pretty much uh, oh excuse me everyone's pretty much sticky webs heavy and stuff like that so Malamar certainly get a boost there. Mhm. Mm yeah, Malamar. I'm, I'm trying to take a quick look at your team. But yeah, you had a pretty decent draft. Um, I don't know if you've seen the the grading yet, but one you got graded pretty well, and the other one not so much. Hey, you know what? At least I got graded pretty well on at least one of them. So, <laughs> um, I will say uh, they did have questions about um, your dragon answers. You didn't. You don't really have a fairy type, and you don't have a steel type. How do you think you can manage that weakness? Since uh, Dragonvish will pretty much be running the lead, attacking on your team. Uh, pretty much a wing and a prayer. That's about it. Uh, Politoed's about the bulkiest thing that we can get, you know, if played right. And Politoed's got ice axes, so as long as it's nothing, like, ridiculous, I think I can handle it. Okay. And, uh, we know Hippowdon's probably gonna be your main rocker. But, um, what what's the idea behind, uh, Sandstorm? Is there anything with that? Actually, um, a lot of times when I use a Paladon and stuff like OURU, I have it as a uh, Toxic Staller. But given that talk, I don't believe he gets Toxic now in Sword and Shield. So I'm going to have to uh, re-pivot my strategy with him. 
Um, well, we are allowing uh, the transfer moves, so you could pass one up that does have toxic. All right, then Murray's going to be just the same old bastard he always has been. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's also a little bit of question about uh, your team speed, or Beetle being your fastest Pokemon, uh, probably aside from Braviary. Um, how, how are you going to try to do with that? Well, see. Orbeetle's got this beautiful thing called Trick Room. Now, Orbeetle's fast, but he also has access to uh, redirect speed in my favor. True. And he also has U-turn, correct? That is correct. Okay, so you lay it and get the hell out strategy, basically. More or less. Orbeetle's a very underlooked mon, especially in like multiple like different fields. Um, VGC is another one of them, even though I know this is absolutely nothing like VGC. Yeah, and that's actually where I met you, is the VGC in Dallas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shame I couldn't get Togekiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we move on to the next question here, which is, which Pokemon that you drafted do you think will impact your season the most? Dragovish, without question. Dragovish has always been and always will probably from now on be one of my uh, Captain Mons. I, uh, I mean, 170 base power. If I correct, if I correct, vicious rend if it moves first. With the top that with rain ability. Yes, sir. Dragovish is going to be one of the most lethal things I got on there, and you know, if it's not Dragovish, it's Malamar. As I said, you know, she's very underlooked, and if she gets going, it's over. Yeah, I feel you on that. So, just to give your. Uh, opponents a little insider if you choose to answer this question um are you more of a scarfer or a bander uh fun fact i actually prefer not to use either one of those you're talking about on dragovish correct yeah most of the time i actually prefer life orb that way i have access to you know some utility moves oh, okay that's pretty interesting that's uh I, I feel that's more of a draft league kind of strategy as well Yep. Uh, one thing I don't like doing is locking them on into certain moves because that just leaves it kind of high and dry if things don't work out for it, and then it puts the rest of the team at a disadvantage. Okay, All right. that's completely understandable. All right, and then uh, one of the final questions is: What team do you think will be your biggest challenge this season? Ooh, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not trying to sound like uh, cocky or anything, but I haven't really had a chance to look. Whoever has that PC, uh, whew, seeing what PC is cop, uh, capable of doing, uh, I think right it was. Shoes, a, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe it was the Rising Right Shoes. Uh, poor Gunzi is one of my biggest issues. One of the things I fear the most because uh, well, I'm not trying to give any ideas here, but adaptability, Silk Scarf, Max Strike ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> As somebody who runs it, you know, in VGC with great, uh, great usefulness. Oh, so you've seen them use it in VGC? Oh, I use it in VGC all the time. Oh, okay. I use Porygon Z all the time, and it is one of the nastiest things. I was actually one of the forerunners talking about back all the way in February. Actually, January. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I I never really see uh, Porygon Z as much of a threat, but it does get that nasty plot and. Try attacks, nothing to mess with either. Well, I mean, just straight up Hyper Beam nukes everything. Paired with Stone Journey or Clefairy on a VGC team, and there, there's no stopping it. Okay. And uh, for the final question, I will be asking it's a pretty off the wall question, but it was asked to me when I did my interview, so I felt like I'm just going to ask everyone whenever I do theirs. If you had an obscure superpower, what would it be? And for an example, uh, when they asked me that, I chose to be able to have any kind of... Ba basically, I chose to be able to summon my favorite foods whenever I wanted. Hey, that's a good superpower right there, honestly. Uh, that's a tough one. That is a tough, tough one. Yeah, um, it took me a minute to answer, too. One part wants to say teleportation, but that leads to some you know, massive issues that your body's got to be able to handle with different pressures, height, stuff like that. You know... Uh, Obviously, I think about this stuff a little too much. Uh, <laughs> invisibility, you won't be able to see because, you know, when you're invisible, it means your eyes can't get the light, so that goes out the window. 
uh, strength, you end up tearing up your own muscles. So honestly, uh, I think I'd rather just wing and go with the teleportation. Just teleportation, be able to teleport at, at your whim? Yes, sir. All right. Well, that will close it out for the Oakland A-Rons. And Timothy, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it is a pleasure. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you and talking with you. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time.